Welcome into another episode. I'm really excited to be joined today by now a two-time champion, uh, former player over at UCLA, and just got her jersey retired, uh, Natalie Nicasse. Natalie, first and foremost, how are you doing? Uh, and second of all, what was that that experience like for you? Because it's got to be kind of a little bit surreal. Yeah, um, I'm doing good. Uh, the jersey retirement was, I mean, pretty much a dream come true, which I never really thought you know, that would ever happen. I was like, they must've made a mistake, but uh, just, um, just having so many family and friends there uh, made it really, really special. And then obviously with the aces and, you know, Tyler, this showing up surprising me. I mean, I just melted, like I started sweating. I started, you know, tearing up and everything just because, um, you know, that drive is is far. It's a five hour drive. Um, I had no idea they're coming. And uh, when they showed up, it was just, you know, just cherry on the top. And then Tyler spoke and the girls just were front and center. Um, so a lot of emotions, seeing people from 30 years ago, pretty much. And then um, being able just to share that space with the people of, you know, my current team. And then, you know, 30 years ago, and then a lot of college friends showed up from UCLA. So, yeah, it was special. It was a lot. It was very special. That's awesome. And, you know, kind of hitting off that, too, I want to ask, like, what is – um, a weird question, but like accepting recognition, what is that like for you? Cause I know for a lot of people that share the space, like it can be really hard to do that sometimes to like, actually like sit down and kind of have that moment. So what was it like getting to have that? Like, obviously, you know, being part of a championship team, like, yeah, you accomplished something, but like, this is like, no, this is fully you. Right. Very uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> just being real honest. Like, you know, I don't really like attention. I'm more like kind of behind the scenes, but I've heard, you know, so many people text me beforehand, just like now, just enjoy it, embrace it, let people celebrate you um, just because it means so much to other people. And, the, you know, the way you take it, I think, you know, means a lot to people. So, um, yeah, like it was it was uncomfortable. But again, just seeing so many people that have been have part of my my path, my growth, my journey um, show up. But also when, you know, they got to speak, some of the coaches and players and stuff like that spoke. Um, I'm really just you know, just a part of them, you know, yeah. from what they taught me when I was in high school and then even grade school, like the lessons that I've learned um, definitely show in my coaching career now and even in my professional career as a basketball player. So um, there's no accident where, you know, I am where I am. It's just because of the people that, you know, were um, were there for me at the beginning. No, I love that. That's really cool because, you know, I was uh, I was down at um, in Auburn a couple of weeks ago to cover Duana Bonner's jersey retirement. And talking to her like she's like I don't know if you know her at all but she's like very much someone who's like I think from the outside looking in people might not realize it because she's like a very energetic person but she is like it's always about her teammates it's always about the team it's never about like taking any kind of recognition for herself and she was like you know this is like the first time where I've really like sat back and thought about what I've done and I'm like that's crazy to me because she's one of I mean she's gonna be a hall of famer she's one of the best players that's ever played in our league and um, she's like, you know, it was kind of like the first time I really thought about the fact that I've done so much and it's it's cool to have that. So I'm glad you got that moment because it can yeah. it's not always easy to take that stuff on and like really feel like you you did that, you know? Yeah. And especially like being a player and I was like really feisty. And so that just kind of goes to show for people who, you know, play a sport. It's like when you're on the on the field or on the court, you come a completely different person. Yeah. Right. I was just a dirty player. I was very aggressive, vocal. Um, but then off the court, you know, I'm just kind of really chill, calm, like I don't like attention. So it's just it's just funny how that unfolds a little bit. And as you get older, you start to realize to learn yourself and what you can do and what you can't do. And yeah, I'm feel the same way as her. Like it was uh, uncomfortable, but, you know, it's satisfying. So, no, that's awesome. Um, so transitioning out of that, too, obviously, like now in, in going to be year three with the Aces, um, but have been coaching for a while. When did you kind of first know coaching was was the thing for you? Because I know you like went like right from playing into coaching, got back into playing for a little bit and then into coaching again. So like was that that just kind of happened a little bit organically or was that something that you thought would happen? No, I never wanted to be a coach. Yeah. <laughs> I had so many people, you know, even when I was in high school, they're saying you're going to be a great coach. And I'm like, I don't want to coach. <laughs> like, just, yeah. uh, It just didn't seem to, I wanted to play forever. You know, and as an athlete growing up and dedicating your whole life to how you train and how, you know, you kind of are on your daily habits, like you enjoy it. Like, I love training. I love working out. Um, that's probably why I'm a, a good coach in that way, because I, I don't mind being in the gym all day. Um, I actually was just talking to AC last night. She's just like, yeah, she's like, you can be in the gym all day long and you're happy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's, you know, but that's just how I grew up as an athlete. Um, and then, 
you know, it just happened. Like the injuries came about. And now looking at our players and seeing how many injuries that they've endured and they've gotten through, I'm like, wow, like I wish I was like, you know, Akia Stokes or AC or Chelsea Gray because they just, you know, on to the next, on to the next with their injuries where I right away said after I tore my first ACL, I was like, I'm done. Like, this is not for me. You know, the the rehab, it was really discouraging. And I look back and I'm like, I should have never said that, you know, so just be careful what you say out loud. Um, never say things um, and just kind of take it in. And I wish I could have played longer, but, you know, coaching was right there. And I'm obsessed with basketball. If you, you know, know me, I, that's all I do. I eat, sleep, drink basketball. I breathe basketball. So um, this ended up being, you know, the next step. Um, where I can be in the gym all day. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And I know like reading up on your coaching career, it's been like very circuitous, um, you know, kind of have hit every single part of coaching that you possibly can. But I really want to ask about, you know, coming up in the video room, because uh, I think for a lot of people, they can hear like, all right, this person's a video coordinator and like envision you like clipping stuff. But I think a lot of people don't realize how insane being a video coordinator is for a professional basketball team. So I was wondering if you could kind of like elaborate on what that was like coming up with, with the Clippers with that, because it's uh yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah, it definitely was different, especially coming, you know, I was coming from a head coach in professional men in Japan and then, you know, going, so my positioning of being kind of the leader in my organization and then kind of being at the bottom um, just kind of humbled me, you know, yeah. and I was ready for it because it was something completely different. The NBA language and the terminology was something I've never learned before. So um, for me, it was, I kind of treated it as like college, like another like four or five years of college of just being able to, you know, watch film, sitting there with a coach. And, you know, I got paired up every year with a different coach and you just start to learn, you know what I mean? So much, you're just like a sponge. And so I loved it. Um, as much as people say it, it's tough, it is one of the toughest jobs um, in the NBA because there's a lot of sleepless nights. I think I average like four to five hours a night for sleep, but I loved it though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I would have never done it if I didn't really enjoy um, cutting up film till one or two o'clock in the morning. And the coaches were like, I need this game, you know, like yeah. my computer it better be ready, labeled right, you know, just you know, having that sense of urgency um, and standing on your toes, but also learning. And then you get to go on the floor, rebound for the players, get to know the players. And you kind of in that space. I mean, you know, you're just constantly learning. And for me, that was so, again, satisfying just in terms of like my growth of why I wanted to be in the NBA. Yeah. What was uh, what was learning sports code like for you? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> OK, so I come from overseas. Right. And so back then it was Skype and email. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I knew as uh, using a computer. And so luckily I had like really good um, kind of uh, other guys who did video and they kind of pulled me aside and was like, okay, let me break this down for you real quick. So actually we didn't have sports code. We had exos at the Clippers. Okay. I don't even know if you know exos. I don't know exos. I, exactly. I'm, I'm 26. So I only know sports code. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So exos was just, oh, it was just, it was harder because um, anytime you had to take a game and then you cut it up and you put it, you always had to check out. So this checkout period took like 40 minutes. Yeah. So imagine like putting a game on, on a, a computer for your coach. And then we have to get out for a flight, right. Right after practice. And so it's just the sense of urgency and time, like was just a adrenaline rush every time because you just hope that it checks out on time. But anyways, so um yeah, it was like like a video game. You know how how sports code is. It's like a video yeah. game. Learn how to cut up. Um, but I think one thing that one of my um, uh, the head video coordinator at the time he told me he's like do it. He's like cut up a film in fast forward like four times fast. And I'm like I'm not gonna be able to see anything. And he's like no, just trust me. Your eyes are gonna catch up. You know eventually. And so once I started doing that, and then actually I had to code a live game because that was another stressful thing. I don't know if you've done that yet. Luckily like, not yet, but it's okay. uh, it eventually. <laughs> yeah. It's really stressful. And so, but then once you watch so many games, right? Because you have to cut up like five to six games a day and then label them. And then once you do a live game, you can't mess up. But then the game becomes super slow as you watch it because you've been cutting up film for like four times the speed. So yeah, those were uh, those were interesting moments. Um, yeah. Again, you figure it out, right? Like you study and plus you're in the facility for so long. You're in the video room for, for so long. I mean, you're eventually going to catch up and learn, so... Yeah, no, that actually, that's great advice because I'm trying to teach myself <laughs> to do it more uh, this spring. And yeah, that'll be interesting to say the least. But it's so different now too, because like, 
Um, I mean, it gives you like such a different appreciation uh, for when it's actually done because I mean, there are like some games and like you can th like, at least for me, cause I use Instat and Synergy and like anytime I see a game go up within like an hour, I'm like, Oh wow. That video coordinator is really on top of it. And then there are other games where I'm like, wow, I really want to tell that staff to get that fucking game up because I've been trying to watch it for two days. But um, yeah, that's, it's actually incredible. Yeah. Every time I pass video coordinators in the back of an arena, I'm just like, God bless you because yes. it's uh, <laughs> I can't even imagine right now. Yeah. And then you have, if you have a coach that went through video, right. And then now is your kind of like the person that you're connected to. And if you make a mistake and they don't like mistakes because probably they got yelled at, then, you know, you're getting hammered like for wrong play call, wrong action. Um, but it's all, you know, great learning experience. And I love the ones, the coaches that really helped me and called me out and held me accountable because now like everything I do going forward, it's like, you're just holding other people accountable now. Yeah, no, definitely. So how did that like maybe impact your approach to things moving forward? Like, uh, you know, coming up like that. In terms, you mean in terms of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As a coach moving forward, like once you got like being more on the bench and, um, you know, how does that kind of impact your approach? Well, I needed to learn the NBA, you know, with again, the schemes. Cause I mean, they were calling out like X out or this is a draft, like just so many words. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't see it. Like, I don't yeah. know what they're talking about. Cause during practice, we'd have to be there with a towel, a ball and just kind of watch. And I'm like, I see nothing like, you know, I was yeah. just, I, I better, you know, learn and catch up because I want to be able to see. And that was my biggest thing when I picked a lot of coaches brains is just being able to see, like, see what's, you know, the next action is going to happen. Um, being able to see the actions in game time. So um, yeah, I was, I was grateful for being able to be in that space because, you know, I'm one to, I'm not going to speak unless I know, you know, like yeah. what I want to say. Cause I, the players, especially in the NBA, like you have, you have one chance with them. Like, so basically if like, you know, if an NBA player asks you like, well, what set was that? And if you get it wrong, they're just going to be like, Oh, I'm not listening to her anymore. You know? So I was big on making sure I knew everything in the correct way. I'm not one to just jump and say like, Oh, I know the answer, you know? Cause yeah. You know, the players won't trust you. And and trust was the biggest thing that for me, you know, being in that space, especially just being a woman, you know, in that space, it was, it took time, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's interesting too, because like you're saying, I think I, uh, so I like didn't, I started just like on a whim, because same as you, I wasn't in basketball, I was working to be a professional boxer and that injuries, as you mentioned, like they just, they have a way of making everything not happen quite like you think, but I want, so I went from like, I was like, you know, 20, 10 12 hours a day and I was in school at the same time too so I was like that's all I did and then I went from that to being kind of on bed rest while I've you know recovered from stuff for a good like six months and I went from being like just casual NBA fan to, all right I'm gonna watch like three or four games every night mm -hmm. and I just remember asking my friend once once I realized I was like, wow you know I really love basketball it's just fun and I wanted to do it I asked one of my friends who worked formerly for the Grizzlies I was like, when does the game like catch up to you? Because I feel like as much as I watch, I don't like pick up as much as I want. He's like, trust me, just keep watching. And it's kind of funny because like, obviously I'm not even close to where you're at yet in like seeing the game, but it's like, even just like going backwards, like a year from where I was at, I'm like, oh, well, like, you know, I can see instead of like just seeing two players, like one thing happen, you know, in pick and roll, all right, I'm watching the big or I'm watching you know, what's happening at the point of attack. I'm like, okay, well, I can see both now. Or like, I can really like see like how this is developing. And like, I, I saw that play six times last week and across different games. Like I can just see it now. And it's like, you know, it's just kind of funny the way that, that brains work with, with picking things up like that. Mm -hmm. It's like learning a new language, yeah. you know, eventually you'll get it. Eventually you'll pick it up and uh, the game will just become slow, slower for you. So, yeah. 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 It just keeps layering. Yes. Um, well, yeah. Moving from that to obviously, you know, coming to Las Vegas, I know uh, Becky was obviously who got you there, but did you guys have a relationship prior or, or what was what was that like when you first heard from her? Yeah, it was more like we played against each other, you know, um, after college, we played in kind of like kind of a league that was kind of like AU right now. Like it's just yeah. a league that players that didn't go overseas. So we played against each other. So I knew she was good. She would just put me in pick and rolls, hold my arm. And then, the, you know, the ref would call foul on me, whatever. So she was very crafty. And then once we got into the league, um, we just knew of each other. You know, we respected each other from afar, obviously. Just at the time, I think we were the only two women um, in the NBA. And so I'd casually, you know, see her, say hi, catch up. But um, it what we weren't super close. 
So um, when I found out she wanted to get on the phone with me, you know, um, a close friend, a mutual friend of ours named Jenny Busek, she was just like, just go on the yeah, phone. Yeah, with Indiana right now. Yeah, yeah, with Indiana. And she's like, trust me, you're, you're going to want to take the call. And I was just a little apprehensive, you know, because I just I didn't know her. Um, but our first phone call was like almost two hours, like didn't it never stopped. Um, just again, got to know each other, got to pick her brain about, I mean, right away I picked her brain about San Antonio playoffs versus us. And mm -hmm. why'd you guys do this? And, and then it just kind of kept on layering, you know, talking about our experiences. We've gone through so many similar experiences through the league. Um, you know, just again, being the only female, like it's just, it's different. You know, you do get treated a little bit different because you're not a, not a male. So, um, so that was really good because we just had so many common things and common interests and, you know, growing up being not the tallest point guard in the league. And, yeah. um, so that, uh, that was another connection. And then I was like, man, like I could learn a ton from her. That was the first thing that clicked in my mind was just like, she's a great person. You know, she, she wanted me on her staff and I was like, I can't pass this up. Yeah. It's like, dude, I mean, shoot, <laughs> Becky Hammond wants to be on her staff. Like, how do you pass it up? Right. A couple of things on that too, because it's funny, like you mentioned with her playing undersized. Like I, so I grew up like obviously like mid to late two thousands, and I didn't really like I knew of the W, but like it wasn't super accessible at the time for me. And so since I took this job two years ago working for the league, I just have like made it a mission to go and learn as much as I can about like stuff in the past. And watching Becky in San Antonio is like insane. She's one of the best below the rim finishers I think I've ever seen. Like some of the angles and stuff that she hit regularly. It's just like, how do you even do that? Like, it's crazy stuff. Cause like, again, like you can read, like look at her basketball reference, be like, Oh, she was really efficient. But then you look at the shots she was taking and how effective she was at them. Like what the hell dude, <laughs> unreal player. Um, yeah. So imagine how she is a, as a coach, right? Yeah. She went through all those, you know, experiences, the games, this just the minutes of experience she's had. I mean, now she gets to, you know, obviously teach Chelsea, teach Kelsey, like just teach all our girls of, you know, the things that she's gone through. Um, and I think that's important with any, you know, head coach who who wants to be, you know, at the top level, whether it's NBA or WNBA. I think being a player has so much more layers to it than people think. I mean, when she breaks down film, it's just like, it's unbelievable. Like she'll talk about, sometimes we talk about bad shots. What's a good shot between a bad shot. And she's like, see how, you know, so-and-so, one of our players caught it. She's like, she wasn't in rhythm. She, her step wasn't, you know, she was just standing too long. And I'm like, that's how we're breaking down a shot. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes it's just like uncontested, contested. That's a shot. But it's just the way like they catch it um, to the timing of their step to then when they're released. It's just, I mean... Those are things that, you know, only someone from her experience can talk about. And so I'm, again, I'm blessed just to learn from her. Yeah. yeah. When did you kind of first realize that it was going to be special in Las Vegas? Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, just again, our coaching staff right away, we clicked. I think mm -hmm. that was key. And then with the players, we, you know, we didn't know them. So that was a really interesting time of us just getting to know them and, and for them to like, they're like, who's going to play? Who's going to start? Who's going to have certain minutes? So I just remember them being super competitive, you know, because they all wanted to play. Yeah. Um, so I just remember we had to have Becky was all about, OK, we got to communicate. There's got to be a lot of conversations with because not everyone's going to play 40 minutes. So I just remember our first year just having a lot of tough conversations with, hey, you may, you know, play a lot but then if this isn't if this matchup isn't working you're gonna have to come out just things like that and when I saw that we kind of were just taking Becky's advice and then just kind of molding into pretty much a family feel obviously now um, fast forward two years later but that first year when we kind of we listened to her we took her advice and then it, it they executed it you know what I mean our players yeah. executed so when you see that type of uh, trust in our first year, I thought that was really special, you know, and then obviously going into our second year, our target, you know, was kind of like this, maybe our first year, you know, because we were, I think, ranked fifth or sixth that first year, yeah. like we're, we're projected. And then obviously that second year was like, OK, it's time to beat the aces. You know, here comes New York. Um, they decided to get a couple more players. And so then our target became like this. Yeah. Right. Like, here we go. And so um, that second year, yeah, I mean, it took a lot out of us. Like, we were completely exhausted after the season um, just because we get everyone's best hit. 
we get everyone's best game. I mean, they look at a calendar, they see Las Vegas aces and they're sitting there circling it. And so um, that helped us obviously prepare for the playoffs. Um, but because we were so close, even after that first year, that built us even closer that second year, you know? And so um, then, you know, game four came around and we're like, Chelsea Gray's out, uh, Kia Stokes is out, you know? And so we're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? Um, but Becky came up with a great game plan. Her adjustments to that game was, you know, I'm not obviously going to go into d- detail about yeah, that. Yeah, no, but, for sure. Um, it was unbelievable, her ideas. And then we had one day to practice. So we practiced it. The girls bought in immediately. And then um, we're like, holy crap, is this going to work? <laughs> you know, we're like, is yeah. this going to work? Just because, again, this was so new to us. Kayla George is now starting. Um, Sydney Colson now has to, you know, has to guard Sabrina. So just so many different layers that was going to happen. And then what ended up, you know, really happening is that from once I got to take a second and look at like the film and look at what happened, it was just honestly is because we, our team chemistry was just top notch and people say, okay, team chemistry, you guys like each other. No, we, we actually, we loved each other. Like, it's crazy to say that, but when we talk about having a great teammate and when we want that person either to our right or left to be more successful than our own self, then like we knew, you know, that's actually what really made us, you know, win in game four. Like that put us over the top, you know. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's really funny because I feel like when I first started off, I used to think like, oh, well, you can, you know, you can out scheme or out talent everything and blah, blah, blah. And it's just funny because the more that I really like get to know and understand the game and the people in it, it's like, no, dude, like you you have to the buy-in has to be there. Like the reason great defenses happen is because you have people who trust one another and you can, okay, well, good switching happens because you're able to to work on, on minimizing a pocket because you have that communication and trust with somebody. And like, it's the kind of thing I just never used to think about. I'm like, Oh, well, they just suck at doing it or, you know, like whatever. And like, exactly like you're talking about in that game. I mean, the, the, the defensive game plan was awesome. And AC played like one of the best indiv- individual defensive games I've ever seen somebody play. I wrote about it. I stayed up that night to like clip it again and like write about it. Cause I was like, this was just like nuts. And she guarded everybody it was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, just did everything. That was so fun to watch, but no, exactly. Like, I think it's, it sounds like cliche, but just the cliches are what matter the most. It seems like um, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, people talk about team chemistry. I just try to keep explaining to them. Like, I mean, we're like family, like every day, yeah, this is the off season and like our coaching staff, we hang out with each other all the time. We'll go out to lunch with each other. You know, we'll go to dinners. Like it's not just on the court. Like we do so much stuff outside. And, you know, this was, this is Becky's idea. This all stems from Becky. Like I'm a true believer in like, okay, people talk about culture. Okay. You talk about team chemistry, but if your head coach, isn't a genuine person and genuinely knows how to relate to people of all different areas, then it's to me, it's not going to work. Yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of just, again, from being, you know, under her for two years um, and just how she, again, treats you just like family, like instantly, you know, she just has this type of energy and care factor that just people gravitate towards her. And because of that, because she's our head coach, then it just, trickles down to us as assistant coaches and then to the players like to me these players are are like family and you know, I just don't say that just to say it it's just like whatever they need as coaches like we're there for them yeah no definitely and like when you mentioned too in terms of getting to know them that first year what was that like because like you mentioned that is a that is a very competitive group um, which can be a blessing and a curse and so obviously a blessing for you guys but like that can also I don't know there have been locker rooms where that can be a difficult thing um, and I know like there was an interview that you and, and KP did together not that long ago where she was talking about like when Becky first calls her and she's like, oh, well, I'm coming off the bench. Like, what do you mean I'm coming off the bench? <laughs> like, you know, kind of like figuring that out. What was that process like and kind of getting used to used to one another and finding out, you know, how everybody ticks? And um, yeah. Uh, like I said, it was just a lot of uh, I would say it was uncomfortable conversations, you know, because you did have to tell players what they sometimes didn't want to hear like Becky even saying that I don't know you Kelsey Plum like but as I know you came off the bench last year so until you prove to me you know you're a starter you know which is kind of crazy now because we look at her and like she's one of our hardest workers um and she takes everything to a higher level in terms of your professional she's like the way she eats drinks sleeps you know takes care of her body I mean it's it's one of the best athletes in the world I've been around 
Um, so with the type of player she was, I mean, she wanted to play for 40 minutes. Yeah. I want to play 40 minutes. Oh, <laughs> that's that, you know, and then as we go into playoffs, like that's just and it, like, that just doesn't make sense for your body. Um, but just, yeah, a lot of tough conversations, but I think they, the, the players respected that we were up front. We held them accountable. If they had any type of like, why, why am I not playing? Why am I not getting this amount of shots? Like I did last year, just any type of questions Becky was like, okay, we got to sit them down. We got to answer them, you know, like these conversations. And that was the best thing I think Becky really pushed was like, do it now. Like, we're not going to wait and like, let them sit there and think about, you know, you know, does she want me to do this? Or, you know, how does she want me to match up with this player? No, we were all about having those conversations up front right away, you know, and, you know, a lot of people don't like that, right? They don't like conflict. They don't like um, to be uncomfortable, but um, we knew if we can nip everything in the butt in terms of kind of indecisions and what Becky's philosophy was and how we're going to, you know, attain it and make sure we follow it every game. That was the key. No, it makes a lot of sense too, because like you're talking about, I feel like there are just, I mean, even just like covering a bunch of teams in college, I know like that can be an issue. Like if you don't <laughs> take care of something right away, like, yeah, okay. Well, the, you, it might blow over, but also it could just keep getting worse. So like, you know, it's important <laughs> to talk about things. Yeah. Um, but no, I really appreciate that perspective. Um, mentioning Chelsea as well. I was, I went and I rewatched the, the highlights from 2022 again. Um, it still feels to me like one of, I mean, not feel, it's the greatest postseason shot making run I've ever watched somebody put together. Um, was there ever a moment like seeing it happen or or after that you stopped and you're like, wow, that was like actually pretty insane to see somebody do that? No, I'm, I'm still in awe <laughs> of uh, her shots. I mean, she just saved us a lot, you know, at, at end of quarters, end of games, like, we're just like, okay, here, here's goes Chelsea. You know, like once it happened a couple of times, we're just like, okay, Chelsea's just going to go off. And uh, I mean, what the thing with her is like, she wants, she loves those moments. Yeah. You know, if you ever, I mean, you know, sports, like you have to have a certain DNA to, you know, have that like big moment feel. And she doesn't even shy away from it. We're just like, hey, Chelsea, hey, this is what we're going to run. Okay. Boom. Like she just, you know, or she can just navigate it on the fly where we don't have to call a timeout. And she's, you know, obviously smart enough to organize where we want the spacing and everything. And so having her is just, I mean, I mean, she's a huge reason why we won. And then, you know, her just also giving confidence to the other players. Cause now it's, you know, people are going to obviously scout us. And so that's why the second year obviously was a little bit harder. Everyone scouted us now. Now everyone knows our place. People are running our offense you know, to a, to a point. And we're like, dang, you guys are running it better than us sometimes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, again, just Chelsea was just so key, you know, and then now look at her in the second year, her passing. I mean, let's talk about her passing these behind the backs, these, you know, and it's so funny because we're working out this week and I'm like, Chelsea, I go, I just need to know, like, what, what kind of drills did you do? You know, cause as a kid, you know, I would put a little piece of tape on the wall and I would pass it and this and that. I'm like, what'd you do? She said, and I, I quote her, she would find a pole, like a, is it a pole? Sorry, just a pole. And she would pass it, you know, to the pole to where it had to bounce back. And I'm like, Jesus. I'm like, Chelsea, I'm like, I need to see this live. Like, I, I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. So whether it was a chest pass, one hand behind the back, I'm like behind the back. And That's she's crazy. like, yeah. she's like, you got to be super accurate. She said she saw Magic Johnson do it. And so she's just like, I want to try it. And I'm like, no wonder, like on, t on time, on target. I mean, Chelsea is always in the pocket, you know, even when I pass to her, she's like, Hey, she got that wasn't a good pass. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm not <laughs> you dude. Like this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But um, to hear that, I'm just like, no, you know, this is not by accident. Chelsea just doesn't make these passes by accident. She's definitely put in the work and uh, yeah, we're just, you know, on the sidelines watching. Yeah. 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 That was the crazy part too, because like I mentioned the shot making in 2022, but it wasn't even just that it was like, it felt like she just didn't make a wrong decision for about a month and a half. And mm -hmm. like, that was, so I'll, I'll just never forget watching that, the series against the storm, of course, like the, I mean, they ran every single kind of defense they could issue. They switched every matchup. They, they did literally everything possible to try and slow her down. Mm -hmm. It was just like, Okay, well, if you do that, the ball's going here. If you do this, the ball's going that way. If you do that, I'm just pulling up. And it was like, I just remember Noelle Quinn in the press conference after, and she was just like, we did everything we could. 
Like there was legitimately nothing we could do about it. That's just the damn good basketball team. Obviously that's not the direct quote, but that's essentially what she said. And like, I, that's exactly what it felt in watching. <laughs> it was like it's still just one of the craziest things I ever saw, but um, you know, go, you know, moving forward into this, this, this last run, especially like watching Asia, like continuing to see like the kind of player she is, the way she keeps evolving. Um, what about her that you get to see kind of behind the scenes every day makes you like stop and recognize like damn okay this is like obviously you know you can you can do whatever from looking outside i know she's a special player but um what to you is, is like maybe the one or two things that really set asia apart that you get to see every day the first time because i have the first day i came to vegas um they're just like hey i need you to meet asia you know at a college game and you guys are just gonna kind of observe um represent the aces and i said okay never met asia before you know and here comes, you know, this tall, <laughs> this is tall, beautiful woman, just, you know, give me a hug right away. And I'm like, she doesn't even know who I, she doesn't even know who I am. Yeah. And she says, Hey, you know, welcome to the aces. And then we just sit down next to each other and just chat, like just chat, chat about, you know, past season, you know, what's been going on, what needs to be improved. Um, and all she did was just not she didn't talk about herself. Like she was, she just came off so humble, you know, giving credit to, you know, we have all these great pieces that da, 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 da. we just have to bring it together. And I'm like, wait a second, this is the best player in the world right now. You know, like I would have never guessed if like, you never told me her name, I would have never guessed that. And then um, during timeouts, you know, she's standing up, she's dancing, you know, the, the camera's on her. And I'm just like, she just, she just doesn't care too, you know? And that's what I love about Asia is just like, she's always her true self at any moment, you know? Like most people would just be like, no, I don't want to dance, you know, in mm -hmm. front of the camera, but she was just up there dancing, having a good time. And then after the game, she goes and she speaks to, you know, both teams, takes pictures. And I'm like, wow, you know, just, I was just so impressed. Um, and she wasn't doing it for anything other than she just wanted to help women's sports. And right then at, there, I knew she's like, she's a great human being. You know, besides the accolades, and I've mentioned this many times, like when you know Asia, she's all about just helping others, you know, giving back um, whatever she can do to give people more confidence, you know, in their roles. Like that's that's Asia, you know, and I think for her, just because she is a confident woman, you know, she's, she knows herself, um, she believes in herself. And, you know, to add on to that is she never um, she never wants to quit, like improving herself. Like she's always looking, you know, oh, so-and-so said they're going to beat us. Oh, so-and-so thinks they're they're sweet. And so she's always, you know, mentally challenging herself. Like, no, nah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to be prepared for that moment. Um, people think maybe, you know, maybe I'm not working. No, Asia's always working. Asia's always, always yeah. ready for moments, you know. Um, but I think that's just, you know, key, being a humble person, but then also understanding and seeing like, People are watching her. Okay, she's gonna be ready for those moments, and you know that's Asia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it was cool. I think I've like, I mean, exactly like you're saying. Anytime I've ever talked to her, it's like, you know, again, watching her, I'm like, well, of course, I know she's a star, she's the best player in the league. But again, every time you talk to her, like, I'll never forget. I did one of the first features I ever did was just something on Alicia Gray, and obviously they were you know roommates in college and, and really good friends still, and um. I knew that she was going to call me to to talk on this story, but she just like was going like to get her laundry and called me like out of nowhere. And I was like, Oh, who's this? She's like, Oh, this is Asia Wilson. I'm like, Oh, okay. I was, was not planning to talk to you yet, but I was not expecting you to call me. But like, you know, so it's just like little things like that. And uh, I did a bigger film breakdown thing just on, on all the core four this year. Um, so I sat, you know, and talked with each one and uh, I just talked with with asia for like 20 minutes over lunch she was like again it's the exact same thing it's like she could i mean and, and again it's not that it's wrong for anybody to like not want to sit there and talk i get it but also like she's like no dude you're good we're just i'm just eating we can talk and gave great answers like it's just again like you're saying like that's it's not the norm for people yes. um yeah. so it's really cool to just like see her be who she is all the time because like you're saying it's i've never seen her not be like that you know right right um, and that's just and then you know so that adds on from becky being a genuine you know leader and then now you have asia who's super humble authentic not afraid to be herself just very real i mean those are you know our leaders like on and off the court so it's just like you know people like to follow the leaders and that's what we do we get to see that every single day 
you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a couple more things I want to wrap up on before I get out of here. Um, getting to coach Candace this year, <laughs> what was that like for you? Because I know for me, like, luckily, I mean, it's it's my job to be around people who are important all the time. But meeting Candace at All Star in 2022 was like, that's like the last time I was really like, wow, you know, <laughs> like that's, I was, I was just like sitting in one of the back rooms uh, in like the media circuit doing one on ones with people, and Candace walks in and I'm like, like I've no new Candace Parker since I was six years old. Like this is crazy. So like, what was that like getting to work with her this year and just like see what her approach is like? Candace is probably the most competitive human being I've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, you're never going to realize it until you're like around her um, mm. on a basketball court. Um, so, you know, like we would have vitamins, you know, I'd have her for vitamins. So that's just like 15 minutes, 20 minutes of skill work before we get into practice. And, you know, it's like one of her kind of off days, like again, so we manage people just, you know, based off of how, how many minutes they played in the game. Um, what does our schedule look like? Like we break down a lot in terms of, you know, um, how like a load management, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so I was advised, hey, you know, Candace needs to have a light load today. Like whatever it is, let's just kind of keep her grounded. Not a lot of movement. I was like, no problem. Got it. Right. So we're getting out there. I'm like Candace can't move a lot. She's like, oh, okay. You know? And so we're sitting there just doing touch shots, just like a normal touch shots. Then she does form shooting. Then she does spots. And then I'm like, okay, we're good. Like, let's just get you, you know, taped or whatever you need. And she's like, no, I want to play once. And I'm like, no, I, I said, Candace, I said, we just said, we just said, like, you know, you just have to keep, you know, save that for the game. And she goes, yeah, but I, I want to play once. And I, I just, I'm like sitting there, you know, arguing with her, which any coach would be like, great. Like, let's play once. Let, let's get better, you know, but I mean, you're Candace Parker, you're, you're, you're good right now. Um, and so again, she's just doing that because she's so competitive. Like she sees a scout guy and she just wants to just like terrorize him. And mm-hmm. then as soon as she gets it too, she's just already talking ish. And I'm like, <laughs> we went from zero to hundred real quick. And, uh, but again, so those were moments obviously like where I'm just like, I can't, I don't know what to do. She's so competitive, you know? Um, so but again, because of that, though, she raises our practice, right? She raises our energy. She raises intensity. Why? Because she's talking. She's competitive. Um, she always wants to win no matter what drill it is, what, you know, if it's a scrimmage. Um, so, yeah, she's she's wild. <laughs> she's yeah. wild. And there's that's why she's a goat. I mean, you just don't come out and you're not a goat for any reason. It's just because she's one of the most competitive people I've ever been around. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, like, how do you even tell Candace Parker, like, oh, you can't play once today? Like, <laughs> right? Like, how do you even prepare for that? That's got to be wild. Um, but no, I appreciate that. Um, you know, lastly, obviously, you know, getting to getting to win a second time. What was uh, what was kind of going through your head the last 10, 15 seconds on the inbounds play? You know, what what's going through your head to start? And then as it's unfolding, where, where are you kind of at with it? Um, what you're talking about the New York game? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, so we did our diligence, you know, as like assistant coaches, like we broke down cause Becky's going to want to know, okay, what do they run Uh, late game? You need, need two, need three. So we knew just based off of like layering all their close games, Stewie, if it's two points, it's going to go to Stewie. If it's three points, it's going to go to Sabrina. Stewie's going to go to her left. So that kind of was the message, you know, given to the girls, like it's probably going to go to Stewie. And so, um we made sure we had the right matchups we made sure um people were in the right spots and at the end of the day we got to make sure we rebound so as the ball goes in right away I think you know we as the coaches we recognize it we're like okay here here it comes like here she comes they're they're spacing it out um freaking uh Sydney did a great job obviously just making that that pass a little bit higher so that was key with with Sid and then she denied Sabrina just in case like just deny Sabrina the ball we don't want her to have her back and then inbounds to Stewie. And then we just see that that little bit of, you know, because that ball slipped, we just saw that. And then we just saw AC just get into her. And we're just like, okay, no straight line to the left. She loves to go left. Um, and as, boom, Jackie fires. And again, this was on the girls. Like, we just let them know this is what pro- might happen. But Jackie, and this is what I'm talking about with the trust care factor. Because, of course, Jackie's like, well, we don't want stewie to just go you know one-on-one with ac and then i just leave leave her out to dry so what did jackie do boom she fired so she went didn't didn't even hesitate and a lot of people would hesitate why because they're just like well i don't want my man 
to score the winning basket, right? But because of the trust, the care factor, like boom, Jackie goes without an instinct, boom, Plum goes, and then now who's open? Vandersloot. Okay, well, that was the person that we were okay with. You know, that's just this, just how we scheme things. We were okay with that. Um, but still, again, the effort to, again, Jackie, late contest, got there, and then Asia had JJ. That's what we thought. We made sure AJ, Asia boxed out JJ, and then, yeah, we just... And then the red light went off and we're just like, hold on. We're like, hold on. And then, you know, it just goes from there. We just started screaming and crying and and everything. But that's all the girls. The girls, they just, they they were ready for it. They communicated. They trusted. They had each other's back. They weren't, they were not going to leave AC on island. And that's what you saw at the end. Yeah, that was the most wild, like 30 to 45 seconds of my last year. It feels like just... Because those crowds were sick at Barclays. Like, I mean, those are some of the best crowds I've ever experienced as as somebody in a covering game. And like, literally, as soon as the as soon as the light went off, it went from like the loudest arena I've ever been in to just almost dead silence. Like that, I can't. I I don't think people who are watching on TV recognize like how freaking quiet it was there. Like, I could hear everything you guys were doing on court from like a thousand feet away. Like yeah. it was wild. Um, but yeah, that was that was special. Yeah. yeah. And then when I mean, I'm sure no one even talked about this, but then when we got announced, obviously with the trophy and Kathy was right, we were getting booed. And I was just like, okay, you know, which I mean, I understand we're not, you know, but that didn't happen in Connecticut. So that was just really interesting. Like, yeah. okay, you know, not that's not I'm not gonna forget that. Um yeah. so yeah, that that happened. And we're just like, okay, it doesn't matter as long as, you know, everyone who was part of the aces, like, that's all we care about right now. So, you know, but yeah. we won't forget that. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, well, Natalie, I really appreciate your time. I know I took up a lot of it, but thank you so much for coming on. This was an absolute blast. Um, is there anything you want to shout out or mention before we get out of here? Um, I guess just shout out the Las Vegas aces. I mean, we're going to obviously try to go, you know, try to go for three. Um, like I mentioned, going for two was really, really hard. And so we just have to be, you know, obviously prepared, ready for the challenge, be healthy. Um, and again, just have each other's backs like we did in in year two. So, yeah. Well, I'm out. excited to watch it play out. I'm, I, the season is simultaneously very close and not close enough at the same time. So uh, I'm ready for it. But uh, yeah, to everyone listening, thank you for listening. Of course, go keep up with everything the Aces are doing. Today is the first day of free agency. It's insane. Um, I'm sure I have 8 million missed notifications on my phone. Um, Wrap this up. Hurry up. But uh, yeah, of course, keep up with everything and have a great rest of your day.